Hello, I'm back. Um, today I'm wearing my crown as a courier of Christ. Christ is like the King of Kings. I'll explain more. In Revelations, uh, Jesus Christ is like the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. I'm not a king, but I'm a queen, and I have my king. That is where sovereignty comes from, from God and Christ, not from government and leaders. That is where our freedom from, from and, and rights uh, comes from. Revelation 3.11 Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast with what you have, that no one may take your crown. We are co-heirs with Christ, the King of Kings. In the book of Revelation, Christ speaks repeatedly about ruling with a rod of iron. But ruling is translated from the Greek word poimanio, which means to shepherd or guard. Therefore, the scripture tells us that God will protect his children with a rod of iron, guarding the flock, not as a dictator, but as a loving father. In the same way, each of us is called to use the power of the rod of iron or the gun, not to harm and oppress, as has been done in the past in satanic kingdoms, but to protect God's kingdom and its inhabitants. And God's kingdom starts in the relationship between husband and wife. In Ephesians, it says, Marriage, Christ, and the Church. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the Church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the Church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wife, wives, just as Christ also loved the Church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such things, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Why do we have divorce and so many dysfunctional families? Maybe ignorance of the difference between man and woman is one part. Like Emerson Eggers explained, women have pink sunglasses on and pink hearing aids and speak through a pink megaphone. And man has blue sunglasses on, blue hearing aid and speaks through a blue megaphone. Many times we do not understand each other. Another reason is the fall of man. In Genesis, where man came under Satan's lineage, Lucifer became Satan. He twisted God's word, tempted Eve with the fruit, which was a symbol of sex, good or evil. See my YouTube video, Root of Bad Sex, which explains about the fall of man. Because of the fall, we needed to be saved. First Jesus came, and the second coming, Father Son Myung Moon came as King of Kings to save us from our sin and the fall. Through the marriage blessing, we can come back into God's blood lineage. His heir, King Shan uh, Moon, is continuing representing his father to bless couples in marriage and teach us to be kings and queens and co-heirs with Christ, who gave us freedom and sovereignty. So I always thought, I need love, so my husband also needs love. Just like me, we always hear love, love, love. But like God said in Ephesians 5.33, let the wife see she respects her husband. Men need honor and respect more than love. 
They are God's representative in the family. The subject who is leading the family and the wife need to learn to respect them unconditionally. Of course, if the men are abs abusing you and a bad man, uh, and a bad man, get out of that situation. But a good, well-meaning man needs respect. So how to respect a man according to Emerson Eggerich's book about how love and respect and my own experience, you need to do the following. CHAIRS is the acronym for how to respect your husband. C stands for conquest. Appreciate his desire to work and achieve. In Genesis 2.15, the Lord took the man into the Garden of Eden to cultivate and keep it. Man was created to work. What is usually the first question a man will ask? What do you do? It is very important for a wife to say thank you to her husband for his work and appreciate him working hard. Believe in him, in his inner man, whether he brings home a big or a small paycheck and always cheer him on. Remember when you first met how you appreciated all he did. H stands for hierarchy. Appreciate his desire to protect and provide. He is ready to die for you. It's no small thing, like at war. Or if a robber came into the house tonight, would your husband say, Sally, get him? No, he would protect you. You could write a respect card to him, thanking him for being ready to die for you. Sign it, your admire. Submit to your husband as you do to the Lord. Ephesians 5.22 Men function well under hierarchy, like in the military or in a business. A stands for authority. Appreciate his desire to be strong and lead. He's at least 51% responsible, but do you let him lead you? There's a lot of problem with feminism these days. Women want to be equal. But God made man stronger physically and wanted man to lead and head up the family. He is also the one who carried the seed, the lineage. I feel good and safe when I follow my husband. So do my boys most of the time. When my husband was not home, it was all on me when my boys were young. Now, as they are getting older, they take more responsibility when my husband is not home. As mom, we need to respect our boys and teach them how to lead. 1 Timothy 2.12 says, I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over a man. I says for insight, appreciate his desire to analyze and counsel. Do not be self-righteous. It will close up your husband and he does not want to be around you and have sex with you. Many times I ask my husband advice and I get great help from him and deep insight with just a few words. R stands for relationship. Appreciate his desire for a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder friendship. Song of Solomon 5.1, Friends and Lovers. Titus 2, the older women has to encourage the younger women to be friendly to their husbands. Like my husband loves when I go with him to Lowe's to shop tool for tools and things. Like he says, we go up and down the aisle again together, just like in church, shoulder to shoulder. We also love to go shooting together and on trips or watch a good movie together. We go on walks together and we go out sailing or fishing or on canoe trip. Remember to stay friends with your husband and do things together. Be a good friend to your husband and do things together. S stands for sex. Appreciate his desire for intimacy. Women need emotional release through talking. Men need sexual release. This is how God created them. Not wrong, just different. Do not judge each other. Wives, do not say no to your husband. Three times a week is normal according to Jim Stevens, a friend of mine. John Gray in Men Are From Mars and Women Are From v Venus in the Bedroom talks about having a quick sexual relationship sometimes 
a medium sexual relationship and sometimes a longer sexual relationship. Why do we have a sexual relationship? This is the deepest love relationship between God, man and woman and is supposed to give joy and happiness and good health. And it's, number two is to procreate, to have and carry and create God's children and continue God's lineage. Reverend Sam Young Moon says from In Search of the Origin of the Universe 1997, if all men and women admit that their sexual organ belongs to their spouse, we would all bow our heads and become humble when we receive our spouse's love. Another word from Reverend Moon, our sexual organs are palaces of true love, true life and true lineage. They're the most precious place. If these organs were to disappear, heaven and earth would disappear. Without these organs, God's ideal, his family and his will could not be fulfilled. These organs are the origin from which everything can be perfected. And this is from Chan Sun Kyung. The sexual organs are the palace of love, you know. And when God's kingdom on earth start, our second king and queen are truly an example of, of true love, couple. He truly loves her and she completely respects him. Check out Sanctuary Church Sunday services and King's Report on our YouTube under Rod of Iron Kingdom. Second King talks about everything, God and Christ, family relationships, sovereignty, Second Amendment rights, politics and news. Praise God. May his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Have a great day and practice respecting your husband and loving your wife. Bye bye. Thank you.